Good morning and welcome. This is June 6th and this is a SimWorld run to one, an NBA Finals Thursday morning. I'm Marsh, joined this Thursday by Rick Blaze. Good morning, Rick. How you doing on this fine morning? Good morning. This is Rick Blaze and this is SimWorld run to one finals time. I'm Rick Blaze and I'm joined today by Marsh. Good morning, Marsh. Hit me with the Uno reverse, why don't we? All right, well, let's kick it off at the uh, association level where game one, SWBA finals, Lakers, or excuse me, Lakers, we'll get to them in a second. Celtics <laughs> and the Mavericks are tipping things off in Boston. Uh, Rick, this has been, we've had a week to build up to this thing thanks to the un uh, dramatic conference finals. What are your thoughts as we get ready here for game one of the finals? Who do you like and why? First, I think it's going seven games. Uh, I think I would be shocked if it goes less than seven games. Uh, I like... I'm home. Oh, if I go off pure talent, team-wise, uh, I would have to go lean towards the Celtics. But again, I've known the Celtics to implode doing Celtic times. So if I was a bad man, I probably wouldn't bet with the Celtics. If I was a bad man, I'd probably go with, I can't really say that word. So I'm going to lean towards Dallas Are you slightly. So I'm going to lean towards Dallas slightly. I'm going to give Dallas a slight edge. Man, Luca and, and, and Kyrie is cooking right now. I think their big two has been more consistent in the playoffs than Boston's big two. And I think that's going to be the difference. Yeah, this is this is a good one because I've I felt pretty confident in my selection after the conference finals, and then you always let time pass and that confidence wears off a little bit. I thought I was gonna really re well, I did really really like Dallas, partially because you go back to the who is the biggest star and who's gonna win based off of that, and that has pretty much been the best way of building out a champion in the league based off who has the best player last year was the easiest one that we've had in the past decade um but in previous seasons i think you can go all the way back ironically to 2011 best player entering the finals should be the team that ultimately wins it and i think that's pretty consistent in every single finals that we had since then that boston possesses the most uh opportune a group to take down and slow down what the Mavericks do. The Mavs like to sag off uh, paint bound centers on defense. They aren't going to have an opportunity to do that. They like to find targeted switches. It's going to be a lot harder to do that, particularly if Christoph Porzingis is playing. Um, they like to be able to get guys that are traditionally not great three point shooters open three point shots, and they hit them at a very high rate uh, in the first three rounds of the playoffs. I don't know that that's necessarily going to be there. But at the end of the day, I still go back to who's the best player. And Luka Doncic has proven, in, in the same vein that I said Anthony Edwards prior after the, the win over Denver was on the cusp of kind of becoming great, and I still think he really is, I think we're seeing the early moments of this Luka Doncic era where I think over the next five to seven years, we're looking at Luka, Jokic, Ant, and Shea as the faces of the league. I think this is the start of that. There's just something about Luka that reminds me of peak LeBron James, where it's just like, oh I don't care God. what the rest of the... Hold oh on, hold on, God. hold on. I don't Jeez. care what the rest of the roster looks like. Oh I just like Luka Doncic. Well, I don't know why that's such a hot take. The guy is the second best player in the league right now. Oh, my gosh. First I'm of curious, all, Rick. The, on the only thing he's better in LeBron in unequivocally is crying. He cry, the way you he just, cries you, see, after every on. play hey, makes you, my ass itch. I don't itch, want to hear March. your Houston bias. Every Houston play, bias he has his hands up crying. I see him getting true. water on the sidelines, on the, and he was crying when he was drinking water. I said, and Luca, LeBron's you got to stop the too. crying. He does it more than LeBron, which makes it unbearable. So LeBron cries a lot. A I'm not lot. denying this. Oh I'm my! God, I can't believe we starting run to one with this shenanigans this morning, Marsh. I, this Look, is, I, I was I all never on said the it boat. was a good thing that he's crying. I was all on the boat until you said Luca reminds you of prime LeBron. I'm on the but boat. Did, hold on, did you keep get listening? me did off you this dang on? This is the Titanic part did you two. Keep listening? There's water on the boat. You got it's big sinking. Ass I'm leaving. There. Did you keep Lincoln? 
Did you keep listening? I said in his inevitability. Hey, I've been doing Thursdays alone. You can leave. We'll just go right back to what we've been doing on these Thursdays. Thursdays so have got free. an uptick since my name was on the billboard, sir. I'm, I'm you sure on my of that. Show now. I'm sure of that. I'm sure of that. I said in his inevitability. I did not. That was it. That was the cut. Oh, now he's Thanos. Now he's Thanos. He's inevitable now. He sure, certainly can be. I mean, he's taking oh, down the number gosh. one team yeah. oh, in the conference. I got a headache. Look, that's where it's going to be. Uh, I'm going to go. Did you take make a pick? Did you say you said you're taking the Mavs, which is just I don't know. great. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even know anymore. I pick me. All right. You, that's, that is nothing <laughs> new. That is eight days a week. Rick is doing that. Uh, I'll go with the Mavs. We'll just go back to my original pick. Uh, more breaking news, though, is we go to Lakerland, where they are now in pursuit, apparently. just We're talking breaking news this morning uh, that picked up steam uh, over the last couple hours is they are in pursuit of Dan Hurley, the two-time defending champion head coach, or excuse me, one-time defending, two-time national championship game head coach Dan Hurley with the Yukon Huskies. Uh, this comes days and, and hours after we saw momentum towards a J.J. Redick potential coaching decision in Los Angeles. Rick, your thoughts? I don't I don't know what the Lakers are doing. This is a, a, a prominent, or I thought it was a prominent basketball club and program. I have no idea what's going on. First, they're clamoring over J.J. Redick. Now they're claiming over Hurley. Oh, they trying to just get the best white boy shooter as the coach. Just, just for them. Are they going to shoot three pointers to see who's going to get? This is madness. What happened to getting a coach who has pedigree in the NBA already? Y'all keep going to the well, getting these ex players with no coaching experience. Not for Hurley, obviously, but for JJ Red, getting these ex players with no coaching experience and and thinking they're going to be the next Jason Kidd. It's not. That's not how that works. Typically, those are outliers. I, I I think the candidates between JJ Reddick and Hurley. I can't believe that's what I'm talking about as the Los Angeles Lakers possible pick. Well, I guess it can't get no worse. You signed Darvin Ham, so we could just go down the rabbit hole of uh. You know what? Robert Ory should be the coach. Someone get Robert Ory on the line. Uh, he's won them championships. Let's get Robert Ory in there for coaching staff, man. Get him in for an interview. Maybe he can be the coach next. Right, because Dan Hurley, a career 29.7 three-point shooter from Seton Hall, really fits your, your narrative, Bill. Uh, Rick, well, he's well, a Hurley I, brother. Don't do that, Marsh. Don't do that. Don't do that, Marsh. You said, I'm just using the information you gave me. You said three-point shooters. Dan Hurley shot 29.7% at Seton Hall. That's all I'm telling you. Again, so that means we go with JJ Reddy because he has a better shooting percentage. We got a comprehension issue over here this morning with you, Rick, not listening to what I'm saying. <laughs> all right. Uh, look. Here's here's what I think is going on, and connected to the Los Angeles Lakers, I am not. Last night and in the days before, you had J.J. Redick, the presumptive head coach for the Los Angeles Lakers. And to Trash. your point, Rick, you are you are correct, and I, I don't necessarily know this is a great decision. Guy's never coached a moment in his life. Uh, we've seen that not necessarily pan out uh, for a lot of folks. We've seen it pan out with the guy, we're going Warriors folks, but reasonably, Warriors signed Steve Kerr after he had been a general manager. He had been at least in the league, but had never coached. To your point, J.J. Redick hasn't even done that. He's just been on TV and podcasts, which apparently is the pathway. Hey, well, Rick might get a head coaching job by the end of this. Thing. I agree. Anyhow, the Lakers... Clearly, in my opinion, we're at a crossroads with Redick in which Redick was wanting more money. He has a relationship with LeBron James, and he wanted to be at a certain contract point. And the Lakers are now using, dangling an opportunity with Dan Hurley to say, look, JJ, this is not the only uh, person that we think can be the head coach. And we have a national championship, national championship runner-up head coach that's actually coached at some level of basketball in the wings, willing to come in. I think this is a purely a uh, um, negotiational tactic by the Lakers, much in the same way that they used Jason Kidd's name to get Jason Kidd a contract extension with the aforementioned Mavericks. I don't really believe Dan Hurley is leaving, partially because at no point has he said that he's planning to leave what he has developed at UConn, which is obviously a national championship winning and caliber team. Uh, I don't think he's going there. I think this is all just a negotiation tactic to get J.J. Redick at a price point that the Lakers want, and maybe J.J. Redick doesn't necessarily. Uh, speaking of prep basketball, let's head down to Houston where tonight 
tonight is the official tip off of day tonight. one of the run to one. We got four games on deck starting at 6 p.m. with Run DMV, Beast of the East, and then 7 p.m. H Town Hoopers Yacht Club. Uh, Rick, four games. Let's start in that 6 7 window. Run DMV, Beast of the East, H Town Hoopers Yacht Club. What are you looking for in, these, in those two games and why? Hey, you know, for Run DMV, they have a tall task. Let's not forget, people talk whatever they want to talk about the beast cities but they're still the champs until they lose until a new champion is crowned they are still the guys run them v's gonna have to get them to play their style of ball to have a chance we're gonna see uh my show later on today does talk about it though it's nothing neither, neither here or there uh for h town and the yard club that's gonna be crazy really good game i expect uh those are similar types of teams uh, who get their points in different manners. Uh, I think Yacht Club is going to have the guard advantage, and I think H-Town has a slight big man advantage with Soul and Yams down low. I can't wait, bro. I cannot wait. It is going to be phenomenal. Yeah, I said this last night uh, in one of the threads talking about Run DMV beats the East. This is the Run DMV's pathway to victories in this tournament is going to just be the three-point shot. And BC yep. East is just a, a super confounding team defensively to me. They have the third best points uh, allowed, Mark, but yet their percentages are both outside of the top 10. It's just such a weird confluence of events. You wouldn't expect a team that's allowing the third fewest points to then allow teams to shoot in the teens from deep. It's a very mediocre defensive team statistically, percentage-wise. So if Run DMV gets rolling, that's their pathway to winning in general. That's their pathway against Beast of the East. H Town, what you percentage, got what percentage you give Run DMV of pulling off the dub tonight? Let's go thirty-eight percent because I oh, think that's pretty just, high. Because what what do we know about three point shots, Rick? We know that three point shots are streaky, but this team has guys that can just light up. From deep so yeah. if they get hot from deep that this series this game is completely different the h-town matchup you talked about almighty soul the first question mark are we going to see him for 28 minutes per game that's what they need to do and you're going up against the defensive player of the year uh yep. in in similar prep and josiah cook that's not an easy matchup um, yep. so i think both of those are going to be dandies on the other side latin america europe these are the eight pms and then rocky mountain and heartland zombie stars your thoughts on those hey the Europe and Latin America game is going to be a, a interesting one, um, to say the least. I, I think that it's going to be a surprisingly good game, actually. Uh, but I am really looking forward to the dog fight between Rocky Mountain and uh, the Zombie Source. Two totally vastly types of teams, the way they play, uh, style of basketball. We're going to see who can impress their uh game plan more on the other rocky uh the zombie stars want to muck it up play physical control tempo and rocky minor want to get out and run we're going to see who can do what best i would expect in that first one with latin american europe i mean richard hennessy and cesar castaneda are going to have their hands full if if they're going inside with suslav and ivanov this thing's going to be over bigs. quick yeah um, that game is purely dedicated or predicated on what happens in the paint. And then, yeah, that second one, um, I, it's, that's going to be, it is very hard to trust Rocky Mountain's defense. They've had good moments here late in the season. We, there's no question mark about that offense. That offense is fantastic. So mm -hmm. if they can play some semblance of defense, I think they've got a shot there. Um, but it's not going to be, it's not going to be easy. Um, all right, that's our show again, six to pretty much 11 p.m. tonight we are going to be sim world prepping it up in houston oh, with the yeah. run to one four games in the opening round uh kicking off four straight days of let's see we got four games uh every single day now through sunday so uh tuning in make sure you are uh this is the biggest day of the sim world prep season it's the biggest day of the basketball season with the SWP finals tipping off as well so get your computer take over the screen from your mom your girl your brother i don't care uh get out your ipad get out your phone because you're going to need double duty to be catching every piece of action uh we're going to be back tomorrow morning recapping all of it four games in sim world prep one game in the swba and who knows what else may come our way rick appreciate you coming on we will be back tomorrow morning with you bright and early chatting about it all thank you for tuning in here on sim world tv the only place you can see the game be the game
Bitch. Soon.